Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Welcome back to QuickBooks Desktop 2022. This is Cindy and we are working through module four where we're going through and talking about setting up customers and jobs. We're gonna start talking a little bit about estimating jobs in the next couple of videos. If you do not create estimates as part of your business, then skip on down to video number nine and go ahead and look through invoicing customers for products and services. We're gonna go ahead now though and start talking a little bit about creating estimates. This is part one. Make sure you watch both parts so that you get a full understanding of how estimates work. Let's flip over to QuickBooks and we'll start talking about estimating jobs. QuickBooks offers the ability to create estimates or quotes so that you can turn those quotes into invoices to get paid from your customer. You can actually do what they call progress invoicing, meaning that you invoice your customer for certain items that are on that estimate until everything is pulled over. On your home screen, you're going to see the estimate icon right here. If by chance you don't see it, it's probably because you told it when you set up the company file that you do not create estimates. Let me refresh your memory on how to turn that back on. If you go up to edit on the menu, come down to preferences, make sure on their left you're clicked on jobs and estimates, and then the company preferences tab. Here's where you turn on the option to create estimates. Remember, if you're creating estimates, you probably do want progress invoicing as well. Make sure this one says yes, and then go ahead and click OK. Now you should see your estimate icon appear. If you do not use estimates and you wanna leave this icon here, it doesn't hurt a thing. You would just start with the create invoices if you invoice in your business. Something else just to know is estimates and purchase orders are on the same line here, and that's because they're both considered non-posting. If you create estimates for a potential customer and you never hear back from them, it doesn't really affect your books. You'd have to actually run special estimate reports to even see that estimate. Let's go ahead and start the process. I'll show you how this works. Let's go ahead and click on estimates. The first thing you want to do is choose your customer and your job. If you're working with the job feature, always, always, always click the job underneath your customer that you're wanting to work with. If you just choose the customer name, you're gonna run reports and see other, and you won't know which job those transactions go to. Make sure you click on the customer and the job. The next thing you'll wanna do is choose the class if you're using the class feature. If you're going to use the class feature, use it consistently because it doesn't do you any good to use it sometimes and not others, reports won't be accurate. I'm going to choose remodel in this case. There are also different templates you could use when it comes to estimates, invoices, any of your forms. If you look over in module 10, that's where you're going to see how to actually customize these different templates. We'll just use the one that it pulls up automatically in this case. The next thing you wanna look at is the date. It's going to pull in the current date, but you can change that date if you need to. And also notice the estimate number. Any transaction that's numbered in QuickBooks, whether it's a check or an invoice or an estimate, it's going to start with number one. You probably wanna start off by changing that number and then it will number sequentially after that for you unless you change it again. You'll see here it pulled in the name and address of your customer. And if you happen to be shipping items somewhere, then you'll wanna choose a ship to address over here. If you don't have one, you can add it. If you don't need this field at all, just leave that blank. Let's go look down in the body of the estimate. If you notice, there's a column that says item, and if you click right underneath it, a down arrow appears. This will give you a list of all the different items you have set up in QuickBooks. Items are things that you sell to your customers. Sometimes you purchase items as well. Items are set up by different types. You'll see that some of these items are services you provide. You'll see some of these are actual parts, physical parts. There's inventory and there's non-inventory. You're gonna have different categories that items can fall into. We're gonna be looking at these in a later module, but for now, we're just gonna use a couple that are on the list to show you how this works. I wanna start with framing. You'll notice once I click framing, it pulls in a description, and you can type over that, you can add to this. 
This will word wrap, so you've got plenty of space to type in that description if you need a lengthy one. I'm going to go over to the quantity field and I'm going to put in 10. And you'll notice that it calculated my 10 times the cost of 55. This 55 was set up when the item was set up. You can type over that if you want to change it, this one time only. You'll notice that it calculated the quantity times the cost to give me an amount in this column. Now we skipped over the unit of measurement. You'll see it's grayed out right here. If you have something you sell by the foot, the yard, the, by the case possibly, you could set that up as a unit of measurement and choose one case, one yard. We don't have that set up in this example. That's why it's grayed out. Let's take a minute and talk about the markup column. You have the ability to mark up an item a dollar amount or a percentage. I'm going to say 30% in this case. You have to put the percent sign or it won't do the percentages. Then if you tab through it, you'll notice that it calculated that for you to give you a total. The last column says tax. That means that for sales tax purposes, framing is a labor and this is a non-taxable item. Let's go put in one more. We'll do a physical part this time. Let me scroll down and find some wood doors. We're going to choose exterior wood door, and I want to add two of these. We'll just use the cost that it brings in. I want to point out the markup in this case. The reason that this markup pulled in automatically and it's a negative number is because when you're setting up an item, you can tell QuickBooks on average how much you pay for it and on average how much you sell it for. If those two are set up, it will pull in a markup for you. We obviously don't want that one. We'll just delete it and we'll put in a dollar amount. In this case, I'll just say $1,000. And notice it did the calculation for me. This is a taxable item because it's a physical product that we're selling our customer. Now you could keep going down the list and add as many items as you want. This line here is not the very bottom. You, it will keep going as long as you keep adding items. Let's take a look at a few things at the bottom of the screen. On the left side, you'll see there's an area for customer message. There are some that are pre-set up, but if you want to add your own, you would click add new and add one. Right below that is a field for a memo, just something quick you might want to say that the customer won't see. And this also tells me the customer is taxable as far as sales tax is concerned. On the right hand side, you can see it gives me the subtotal, the total of the markup. If there was sales tax, it has the sales tax rate pulled in and you see that amount and then there's a total at the very bottom. That gives you a general idea of how to set up the body of the estimate. What I want to do now is head on over to part two and we're going to go up and look at some of these options that you see on your icon bars up here and a few of these different tabs. We'll be looking through some of the reports and things like that. So let's head over to part two and I'll see you shortly. Hey there, welcome back to QuickBooks Desktop 2022. This is Cindy. We just completed estimates part one, where we were able to set up an estimate for a potential customer. Let's go ahead now and finish talking about some of the other options available for estimates. This is part two. Let's flip over to QuickBooks and we'll keep going. In part one, we actually created an estimate for a customer and I'd like to go back to that estimate. Since I'm on the home screen, the easiest way to do that is to go back to the customer center right here and look at the transactions for my customer. We were using Tom Allen and you can see that here is Tom Allen's estimate. All I have to do is double click and go right to it. Now that we have the estimate created, what I'd like to do is go over some of the options with you and we'll go to the top of your screen and go through these four tabs. Starting with the main tab here, you'll see the first thing you can do is use the find feature that QuickBooks has to find an estimate. You could use the arrows that go left or right to go to the next or previous estimate. Keep in mind that every transaction in QuickBooks is set up in date order. That means that if you had previously entered an estimate and maybe you backdated it a few days, it may not be the previous one when you hit this arrow and you have to keep clicking on it. If you can't find it that way, you can click on this find option right here. And this will allow you to put in some criteria. 
You can see that you can put in a customer and job name, a date, beginning and end date here, an estimate number and an amount, and you can fill in all or any of this information you like and then have it find for you. And that would generally find that estimate. The other option I wanna mention is this advanced option right here. You can go in and put in any of this criteria under this filter column that you see and search that way. We are gonna look at the whole search option a little bit later. Let's go ahead and close out of this. I just wanted you to know that advanced option was there. The next option you see here says new, and this will allow you to create a new blank estimate. This is the exact same thing as going to the bottom of your screen and clicking on save and new that you see down here. The next option over says save. If you're working on this and you wanna save what you've done so far, you can hit that save option. Notice there's a down arrow there that will also let you save this as a PDF file if you'd like to do that. Here's where you would delete this estimate if you'd like. You can also create a copy. That's handy if you need to create another one exactly like this and maybe just make one or two changes. Saves you a lot of work. We're also going to be looking at memorizing transactions in a later module, but this would allow you to basically tell QuickBooks that every month, as an example, I would like to see the same estimate in QuickBooks. You can also mark a transaction as inactive. Now what happens is if you have a transaction that's inactive, it will still be in QuickBooks, but it's not counted as any of your numbers when you run reports. If you ran an estimate report, for example, it wouldn't be counted in those totals. The next option you see is the option to print this. You've got a couple things you can do. You can preview this, which we're gonna do in a second. You can also just print the estimate right here. You can print an envelope, which will do a mail merge with Microsoft Word. And you can also save this as a PDF. Let's start with the preview option. I'm gonna just click anywhere in the middle and that will zoom in. And I wanted you to take a peek at what your estimates will currently look like because you will want to customize this. You can see it's very plain. It has your company name and address at the top. You may wanna add a logo, your telephone number, the website, email address. You can do that by using one of the templates that's available to customize in QuickBooks, and we're gonna do that in a later module. You'll see here's the date of the estimate, the estimate number. Here's where it automatically puts the job name. Notice they call it project. That would be something else you may want to customize. The big things I wanted you to notice here is that when you have an estimate, the customer does not see the name of your item. They also don't see the markup column. Now you could turn those on if you wanted the customer to see those, but generally you don't want them to, so QuickBooks doesn't turn them on automatically. You'll notice at the bottom, you can see the subtotal and the sales tax and the total of the estimate as well. And again, those are some things you can customize. I'm going to close out of that here at the top. The next thing I wanna point out is the email option. You have the option to email this to your customer. If you had several that you had set up that you wanted to email, you would make sure this little checkbox where it says email later is checked, and then you could email the batch. Notice you can also attach a file to this. This could be a Word document or something you've scanned in. Notice you can also create an invoice from here. Chances are you will not be in this screen when you want to create an invoice, but you can do that from here. And just to mention the start project, there are several different add-on packages you can buy for QuickBooks. In two, it does make a project management type software, and this is where you can go and get a 30-day free trial if you'd like. It's called Mavenlink, and that way you can manage the project, the expenses, anything related to it. Let's look at the formatting tab. I mentioned a few moments ago that you could customize this template for this estimate. This is where you would be doing some of that. And like I said, we're going to look at that in a later module. Here's where you can run your spell check. You can also insert a line, whichever line you happen to be clicked on. If you insert a line, notice you insert one above the one you're clicked on. If you're clicked on a line, you can also delete that entire line. 
or you can copy the line you're clicked on. And here's some more customization options we'll look at in a later module. Now let's talk about the send slash ship option. I mentioned earlier that QuickBooks can do mail merges with Microsoft Word. You can merge envelopes, letters, and this is where you would work with those options. We will work with those in a later module as well. And then let's look at the reports for a moment. There are a couple of generic reports already set up for you that are related to estimates. You can see you can run an estimate by job if you'd like. If you want to see an estimate versus actual, you can do that. And then you can also see an item price list. I also want to point out the transaction history, which you have none right now. But if you'd already created an invoice based on this estimate, maybe received a payment, that would create a history you could go look at. And sometimes that's very helpful to narrow down where to find certain transactions. Typically the main tab is where you're going to be working. So I'll just click back on that. And that's how estimates work in QuickBooks. I'm going to go ahead and save and close at the bottom. And if you've made any changes to your transaction, it will ask you if you'd like to save them. Just go ahead and say yes. Now that you know how to create estimates in QuickBooks, let's head over to the next video and we're going to start talking about how to create invoices based on those estimates that you've already created. This video is part of our full QuickBooks 2022 course. To take a look at the course, click over there. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And to see more QuickBooks 2022 videos, click over there.